So My Little Pony Friendship is Magic has sunk to new depths by releasing a CCG or collectible card game based on the show, and I promptly dove in right in after it. Being a card game player, I'm usually up for learning new card games, so imagine my joy when I found out not only is the game reasonably well balanced, but was, most importantly, fun. So with this game still being relatively new, I decided the best way to show my love for pastel coloured ponies and staring at cardboard for hours on end was to do a tutorial on how the lovely card game works. So let's start at the beginning, shall we? Before you even pick up a deck or rule book, the first thing you want to know is how do I win this game? The answer is easy. Be the first to get to 15 points. At the start of each game, you and your opponent start off with 0 points apiece, and use your decks to try and rack up as many of those points as you can, all the while hindering your opponent. But how, you ask? Well, by solving problems. Confronting or solving problems is the quickest way to rack up those points. Another way is by defeating troublemakers and villains. A deck is the name given to a stack of cards from which you draw your cards. In this game, there are two different types of decks. You have a draw deck and a problem deck. The draw deck contains a minimum of 45 cards, which include friends, events, resources, and troublemakers. And the problem deck contains 10 problem cards for you and your opponent to solve. This is what a standard field looks like. You have your draw deck and problem deck, a discard pile for used and dismissed cards, and your home. Your home is where your characters go after they have solved a problem or been sent there through some other means. Your home has a limit to how many friend cards it can have in it, which is determined by your main character card. If you have more friends at your home than is allowed, you must dismiss one or more of them from play at the end of your turn. On the field, you also have room for your reference card, or scorecard, whichever you like to call it, and an area for keeping your tokens. Now that you know how to win the game, you might as well learn how to read the cards so you know what you're doing. The cards are broken down into the following categories. Main characters, friends, events, resources, troublemakers, and problem cards. Main characters are on the field from the very start of the game. They have a name, a color, a power value, ability, and flavor text. Main characters contribute their power and colour towards solving the problem they are assigned to. They are double sided and start the game with the start side face up. Once the condition on the card is met, it is turned over or flipped. Main characters are not counted as friends, and as such they can't be targeted by cards and effects that would target friends. They can't be removed from play, and they can't be frightened. Friends are generally what you use to solve the problems and troublemakers you encounter. Like the main character cards, they too have a name, colour, power, ability, and flavour text. The difference between the two is a friend doesn't have a boosted side and it has a cost. The cost is what you need to play it, hence the name cost. Here you will see the cost consists of a circle with a number in it. This is how many action tokens it takes to play the card to a problem. Underneath that you will see that it has a colour with another number. This is known as its requirement cost. Basically, as long as you have the requirement power equal to or higher than that on the field, you can play it. And no, Magic players, you don't need to tap for that colour. Friends are the primary way to solve problems. Like main characters, friends contribute their colour and a power value to the problem they are assigned to. Events are similar to friends in that they too have the same general layout. The difference other than the border and the symbol in the top left is that events state when they can be used, and once they are used, they are then discarded. See here, let's get this party started, says main phase. Thus it can only be used in the main phase. Whereas what went wrong, states it can be used as part of a face-off reaction, i.e. in reaction to a face-off. The power, however, is meaningless until you get into a face-off, so don't worry about that. Resources are essentially the same as events only these can only be played during the main phase and state where they're played to, i.e. to your home, to a friend, and even to a problem. Once they're played, they state whether they can be activated or if they perform a continuous field effect. Now for troublemakers. These cards follow the same format as events and resources, with the exception of apparently having no cost. These will be further explained in the troublemaker part of the video. 
And finally, we have one of the most important cards of the game, the problem cards. These will make up your problem deck and have a name, ability, flavor text box, how many bonus points it gives, the requirement you need to confront it, and the requirement your opponent needs to confront it. Okay, now we know what the cards do, but when and how can we play them? Well, this is where the phases come in. Phases determine the order in which a turn happens. So these are the phases. First we have the ready phase. Here we draw a card, with the exception of the first turn, ready any friends except any frightened ones, and collect our action tokens. The number of action tokens you get depend on the highest score amongst both players. So if you're on one point and your opponent is on four, then you get three action tokens. The action token distribution is as follows. The next phase is the troublemaker phase. Here we reveal a face down troublemaker we played earlier, or we can face off against a face up troublemaker. Otherwise, we can skip this phase and move on to our main phase. This is where all the fun happens. This is where we can play cards, move cards between our problems and our home for two action tokens, draw a card for one action token, ready a frightened character for two, and play a troublemaker face down for one. Once we have done everything we wanted to or could do, we can then move on to the score phase. This is where we confront problems and have double or single face offs. Once a problem is being confronted, we gain one point for as long as we can continue confronting it. If we can't confront the problem, nothing happens. And if we're the first to confront the problem, we get the standard one point plus the bonus printed on the card. And this brings us to... Now for Troublemakers, and Dear Luna is the name apt. Troublemakers interfere with your opponent's game and generally annoy everyone except the person that played it. The cards follow the same format as events and resources, with the exception of how they are played. Troublemakers can only be played face down at a problem and only during the main phase. You will also see that they have no cost associated with them. This is because they cost one action token regardless. Troublemakers are revealed at the player's troublemaker phase, the turn after they played it. While the troublemaker is face down, the opponent still has the opportunity to confront the problem. However, soon as the troublemaker is revealed, no matter if you were confronting the problem or not, you are no longer confronting the problem, and therefore cannot score any points from that problem. The only way to get rid of a troublemaker is to cause a troublemaker face off. That said, when you play a troublemaker, you're stopping your opponent from scoring. You can still attempt to confront the problem and score off it. Now, you may note that some troublemakers have the keyword villain on them. These cards have special rules associated with them. When they are revealed, all friends at that problem become frightened, red flipped face down, and any previous troublemakers at that problem are dismissed. Villains also stop both players from confronting the problem. So, in order to get rid of them, they can be faced by either player. So now we've finally come to face-offs. There are three kinds of face-offs. Single problem face-off, double problem face-off, and a troublemaker face-off. A single problem face-off occurs when both players are confronting a single problem. Here, both players are successfully confronting the problem, so we have a single problem face-off. Both players total their power levels, so player 1 has 2 power, and player 2 has 4. The aim is to have a higher power level than your opponent, so here, player 2 is winning with 4 power. Once both players are ready, they reveal the top card of their draw decks. Then, they add the power of the revealed card to their total. So player 1 revealed Hard Hat, which has 4 power, and player 2 revealed High Spirits, which has a power of 1. Player 1 adds 4 to his total to get 6, and player 2 does the same thing to get 5. Now they compare their totals to see who won. In this instance, player 1 won, so he gets extra points equal to the printed bonus on the problem card. Then, all players move their friends that participated in the face-off home, put the solved problem to the bottom of the problem deck, and reveal the top card of the problem deck. 
The revealed cards from your draw deck go to the bottom of your draw deck, and then you can proceed with the game. A double face-off happens the same way, only this is triggered when one player is confronting both problems on the field. Here the players add up the total of all friends at both problems before flipping. The winner gets the bonus equal to the highest printed value on a problem. For example, if Bunny Breakout and Cloud Bursting have been solved, the winner would get one point as they both have a bonus of one. However, if it's Bunny Breakout and Avalanche, then the winner would get two points as Avalanche has the highest printed value. Troublemaker face-offs are slightly different. The Troublemaker can only face off during the Troublemaker phase and only if the player chooses to. That's right, Troublemaker face-offs are optional. However, if you choose not to do a face-off, the Troublemaker will still be there causing you trouble. When a player initiates a Troublemaker face-off, the challenging player counts the total power of all characters at that problem. This time we're comparing that total to the power written on the Troublemaker card. For example, Purple Parasprite here has a power of 3. Once that is done, the opponent and the challenger flip over the top card of their draw deck and add the power to the current total. For the opponent, this would be added to the Troublemaker's power, and then we compare them. If the challenger wins, then the Troublemaker is dismissed and they gain the amount of points stated on the card. In this case, 1. If they lose, however, they select one of their characters and send it home, and then proceed with the turn. Now some of the terminology I have used in this video may confuse you, so here is a list of terms that exist. Flipping. This is the act of taking a card and placing it on its reverse side. So flipping can involve turning a card so it's face up or face down. Keywords. These are usually a word that are associated with a particular ability. For example, Twilight's keyword is studious. This is done to reduce the amount of text on a card so that you aren't reading point to font. Frightened. While a card is frightened, it is flipped face down and is considered to be blank, having no color, power or any text. It can't be involved in face-offs or help you confront problems. While frightened, a card can't be exhausted and when it becomes frightened, any resources attached to it are dismissed. Dismissing. When a card is dismissed, it is removed from play and put in its owner's discard pile. Characters. The term characters refers to both your main character card and your friend cards. Confronting. If your character is at a problem and fulfilling that problem's requirements, you are successfully confronting that problem. Solving. A problem card is only solved after a face-off, where it is then placed on the bottom of the problem deck and a new card is revealed. Exhausted. While a card is exhausted, it can't be involved in face-offs or help you confront problems. Once exhausted, a card is marked with a counter and it can't be exhausted again until it is readied. Readying. When you ready a card, it is no longer exhausted or frightened. Banishing. When a card is banished, it is removed from play entirely. And for a few keywords. Studious. When you win a face-off, if you have at least one character with this keyword involved in that face-off, you gain an action token. Caretaker. While at a problem with at least one of your critter friends, Characters with this keyword gain plus one power. Swift. Moving a character with this keyword costs you one less action token. Stubborn. Even while exhausted, characters with this keyword can still apply their power during the score phase and be involved in face-offs as if they were readied. Inspired. At the start of your main phase, look at a number of cards on the top of an opponent's deck equal to the number of cards you have in play with this keyword. Put each of those cards on either the top or bottom of that player's deck in any order. Random. During a face-off, for each of your characters with this keyword involved in that face-off, the first time you flip a card with one power, you may ignore that card's power and flip a new card. Villain. This denotes that a troublemaker is a villain, and they have special rules attached. Start card. This is able to be the first problem you face from your problem deck. 
Before you start the game, you select one card with this keyword from your problem deck, take it out, shuffle your problem deck, and then put that card on top, face down. Well, that's most of the tutorial done. Congratulations for sticking with me for this long. However, before I go, there's just a few more things. If you run out of cards in your draw deck, you just skip the draw step of your ready phase and keep playing. If you need to flip a card for a face-off and have no cards in your draw deck, you just skip the flip step of the face-off. Some cards give bonus power, such as choose a friend to get plus two power. Others give bonus power and color, such as choose a friend to get plus two blue. When a character receives both bonus power and a color, it is both its original color and that bonus color as well as the bonus power. For example, if you give sweet and kind to a friend with one power, that friend is both orange and yellow and has three power. However, when confronting a problem, a character with multiple colors can still only apply its power to one color requirement. For example, a friend could apply its power to either A requirement or B requirement, but not both. It is possible for a character's power to be less than zero. However, during face-offs involving these friends or when resolving these friends' problems, their power is considered to be zero. For example, if you have two friends in a face-off, one with three power and the other with negative two, your total power in the face-off would be three. And finally, as in every card game, there are a few golden rules. They are, card text takes precedence. This means that if the text on a card conflicts with any of the rules of the game, the card text takes precedence. For example, if a card says skip your next draw phase, this is breaking the rule that you must have a draw phase. In this case, the card text overrides the rules, so you would skip your next draw phase. And finally, have fun. Card games are supposed to be fun, so sit back, relax, and try not to take everything too seriously. It's all in good fun. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the flip side.